Hey guys, what's going on? Joe McCall here. This is the Real Estate Investing Mastery Podcast. Glad you're here. We got a special guest today on. He is the king of cold calling. And uh, does cold calling work? You bet it does. It does, and it works really, really well. Some of the biggest, most active wholesalers are still using it today. Um, it's our primary source of wholesaling deals uh, on the houses side of our business. So cold calling is killing it. And here's the key. You get somebody else to do it. And so we got Scott here going to be talking about cold calling. This is something you don't want to miss. And uh, it's not something you want to do by yourself anyway. You want to get somebody to help you do it. And uh, we're going to be talking with Scott from Lama Sioux. And uh, But first, a couple house cleaning things. This podcast is brought to you by my brand new PDF report called the Recession Proof Real Estate Investing Kit. And this is going to help you and your business as we come into this, maybe we're already in it, but as we're coming into this recession, you need to understand the simple basic things to prosper and thrive and grow your real estate investing business. I'm telling you guys, I network and I talk to a lot of successful investors all over the country. And nobody that I know is that's actively in the business, right, doing deals, is worried or concerned about this recession. In fact, we're excited about the opportunities that are coming our way. But there's some things that you need to understand and be ready for and be prepared for. Um, I'm telling you guys, we're seeing interest rates go up. We're seeing inflation. You've all heard of that, right? I mean, I spent $125 filling my gas tank the other day. Um, so we're seeing mixed signals though, right? Like people are still buying houses. People are still selling houses at record paces. Um, what's going to happen? I don't know. And so this PDF is not intended to predict the future or to tell you what's going to happen. This PDF, we wrote this thing to help you be prepared and ready for whatever happens. And even if a recession doesn't happen, even if it's not that bad or it doesn't last that long, the principles that we talk about in this recession-proof PDF are going to help you be ready for whatever happens. It's going to help you do more deals. It's going to help you be safe to protect your family and uh, to be ready for whatever happens. So, you can get it for free at reiproof.com. You get a mind map and some videos and all my tools and checklists and scripts and things like that. It's absolutely free, reiproof.com, okay? So go check that out. Um, cool, let's bring on Scott. Scott Morse from Lama Sioux, Lama Sioux Leads. How are you, sir? Good morning, Joe. I appreciate the opportunity to come on here and chit-chat with you. I'm glad you're here all the way from... I Columbia, I South America, Columbia. baby. Nice. And I guess you you might even have a background similar to mine that's real based on where you are, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, so this I've only been in your guys, the real estate vertical for about two years. But prior to that, I've always been in like large marketing infrastructures. I sold leads to attorneys nationwide wow. for about eight years or so. And so I've always had this call center enterprise type uh, marketing room. And so here we are today once I found your guys industry. Awesome. So only two years. I thought you've been in it longer than that. No, sir. Two years moved. Well, technically two years and three months. But yeah, that's when I moved here and started this venture to kind of deep dive into your guys' vertical. Awesome. So how long have you been in Columbia then? I had that two years and three months. Okay. Literally, I moved here just to be able to launch this campaign the way that I needed it to be able to launch to be successful in, in, in your guys' industry. Well, I'm just curious. Why Columbia, though? Why, why not another South American country or why not yeah. in the U.S.? So it was a lot of diligence, candidly, because you're talking about, and that guy, I don't speak Spanish. I mean, now I, I at least I understand it a little bit better yeah. after a couple of years. Um, but man, I'm just like most of the people who are watching this. I wanted to outsource my cold calling once I found out about this vertical. Like I already had PPC down. I understood digital media and I started to outsource. And at first I did the Philippines and it was like chickens in the background or it would rain and they would lose power. And it was always an excuse and turnover. And I was like, oh, like within weeks, I was like, this is terrible. And then I did a campaign in Egypt and it was kind of similar. It was just under what I would consider at that camp time, underqualified leads. Huh. And so I found a guy just randomly on Facebook in Cali, Colombia. And we started chit-chatting. We had a really good, successful campaign. He had never scaled a business, but I was like, oh man, Colombians understand American sarcasm. Yeah. They're on the right time zone. Yeah. Uh, the cost per lead, which was obviously a major driving factor is going offshore. So I was like, man, like 
I could just move down here and set this up. I really enjoyed the culture. I enjoyed the people. I had some friends that were Colombians, and wow. uh, that's how we got it here. It's beautiful there, too, I imagine. It's insane. Like, I don't know if I'll ever go home. I'm in the uh, middle of the Andes mountain, like right outside my office window right now. I see a gorgeous mountain. There's like a cloud on the top of it. I can see coffee trees on the side of the mountain. Green as can be beautiful. Is the coffee better there than it is here in the U S of course, bro. And it's so (laughs) inexpensive too. And it's just, it's great. Awesome. All right. So let's talk cold calling. Um, yeah, man. What, what got you interested in cold calling? Why cold calling? So I think what got me interested is really just the cost per lead, right? And so for me, I think everything just starts from a marketing perspective before it goes to a sales perspective. And so I understood real quickly what my PPC costs were going to be. And I've just had other campaigns as well, too, where it's like, okay, PPC is great. It generates a lower funnel client, which is typically a little bit more motivated. But when you're at scale, you want to have not only a plethora of the lowest funnel, but you also want to be able to generate a little bit more of the high funnel at an appropriate cost per lead. So it should be a fraction of what your PPC costs are. And so I just couldn't figure out a way to do this in the States, you know, paying some 20 year old kid 19 bucks an hour to bang on the phones. And so I just said, man, listen, I know cold calling in and out. I know how to uh, devise the campaign, run the dialer, let's rock and roll. And so that's why I decided I was going to be prime. And this was just for myself. It didn't actually become a company for other people for like six, seven months. So I'm like, dude, you're all, oh, you're murdering it. Can I get some callers? And I was like, yes. And so that's what started <laughs> Lama Sue the business. All right. So before that though, you were, you said you were working for lawyers, giving them leads. Is that right? Yeah, that was the entire industry I was in prior to this, okay. which is actually kind of a similar cohort. Like um, we had a 160 person call center in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, uh, a lot of PPC leads, a lot of cold call leads there. But essentially what we were doing is reaching out to people who were in distressed situations. Mm-hmm. There was identifiers kind of like in the real estate business, right? Pre-foreclosure, pre-probate. And we were making contact with them, finding out if they qualified to be able to speak with an attorney. And if they did, that was a lead which got sold off. Very similar here. It's a front or closer model where I'm calling on behalf of what I call an affiliate. In those days, it would have been an attorney, but a real estate investor. I have their investment box, buy box criteria. I know how to target cohorts. I call them up. I verify them. I make sure that they're qualified and then pivot that lead over to the real estate investor or wholesaler who's like, bam, you've done the whole front end of my operation for me, brother. Cool. Hyper qualified leads. Let's roll. Yeah, you know, I've heard of Lama Sioux for a long time, and uh, I was at a mastermind a couple months ago here in St. Louis um, with a mutual friend who was there, Andy, Andy Werner, and um, he just was raving about you guys and Thank how you. awesome you guys are. And um, even in a difficult, super competitive market like he's in, you're his number one lead source, you know? And um, so it's been, I, I thought, all right, I got to get Scott, I got to meet him, get him on the podcast and talk about Lama Sioux. Now, you're you don't deal with anybody. I mean, you deal with the major players. You're very selective on who you get to work with. Um, so talk about why, like, why have you chosen to go that route? And, um, and then I have some more questions about how you do your cold calling. Yeah, I'm an open book, man, anything. Um, and it's my pleasure, too, because I hope people pick up a little bit of insights because even, you know, I, I'm very well – My avatar is higher than probably any marketing channel out there um, for this vertical. And I'm also highly agnostic to it as well, too. And so I think that gives me an unbiasedness to the process. Like if there's a better mousetrap, I'll just go to a better mousetrap. This is an infrastructure. This is an ecosystem. I can insert any product into this. And so when you have that type of of, uh, functionality and, and the ecosystem, if you will, it's more designed for people who are more established. So my baby entry level is probably like somebody's doing four to eight deals a month who's just trying to get the 10. They're trying to stabilize. They have inconsistent lead flow. Um, but my favorite clients are the guys that are doing 10 to 20, 30 to 40 because they have a real sales team, right? Like yeah. they're doing training. They have an infrastructure. They have a nurture campaign. And there's just fun to work with, man. It's like getting on Zoom with their closers and everybody's hooting and hollering and it's a great sales environment. I love it, man. It's That's what makes me excited about what I do. Yeah. Okay, cool. So like talk to somebody who um, – is maybe trying to do some cold calling. They're already doing a couple, three deals a month, right? right? Um, and they're trying to get cold calling to work. 
maybe they're just struggling with getting traction. Um, talk to somebody, not the beginner. I want to ask you questions about the beginner here in a minute, but the guy who's sure. already doing a couple of deals a month. What, what, yeah, what, like, what are some things they can do to um, – maybe they're not at the level yet where they can work with you, but they're getting there. You know, as crazy as it sounds, <coughs> it's really amazing – how many people have little teams, but with no inspection of what they're doing. And I know, so one of my things, people don't do what you expect, they do what you inspect. And so if I ask somebody, hey, like what's your call to answer rate? And they don't know or can't get it, you're just not gonna be able to scale that. And if I'm like, hey, are you tracking your cohorts? We call them cohorts, other people call them list segmentations, but they're saying, okay, cool. So we had 10,000 records of absentee, 10,000 records of owner occupied 70% plus this, this, and this. Which one of those are driving your leads? And if they're not able to do an analysis of their dialer from the call to answer rate, from their list as to which segments are performing best, their agents, what their average talk time is, what their abandoned time is, there's just so many things. It's like, man, until you have a foundation, you can't build a house, brother. You're going to be a hobbyist as much as you want to be an entrepreneur. You're not acting like an entrepreneur. You're acting like a hobbyist. So you just can't build a house without plans and executing on those plans. So you need to know your numbers. You need to know your numbers, man. Yeah. You, you got to. And what I, I would tell people, too, is with their dialers, any dialer that they're using, all these guys got great customer service once you can get them on the phone. Like, they're actually tough to get on the phone, these dialer guys. But, dude, you spend hours with them. Hey, listen, I want to run a report for this. What do you think the best practice for this is? I want to get this, and I want this automated, and I want this emailed. You're paying these guys 150 200 bucks a seat. Use those people mm -hmm. to almost be like your VA to yeah. get your numbers dialed in. And then if you can't be an adult and review your reports daily, you shouldn't be in the space anyways. But people who will be watching this do. And so that's it, man. Help Have them help you set it up. Monitor your numbers. And then you can start doing the, the, the fun things that really increase your flow. Okay. Let's talk, talk about some of the numbers you guys track. What are some important KPIs? Yeah. So the North, the North North Star is called an answer rate. I need to know how many attempts that it takes to get an answer. Like a human answer, a machine answer, we track both of them, but we got to get past. It's almost like I don't play hockey, but I always use this reference in my office. It's with these carriers, you have to be very, very aggressive to get past the goalie. And so it's our number one KPI because we can be as good as we want, but we're doing almost 2 million dials a week right now. Wow. You can't do that unless you're uh, at least you can't ever be a step ahead of the carriers, but we're dancing with the carriers. Um, so one of the things, you know, we age all of our numbers. We register all of our numbers with the carriers. Everything's U.S. based, even though I'm international. I'm just doing everything above board, fully transparent uh, to be able to make sure we can get past the carriers. And I would just tell people who are watching this, for me, anything under 15 attempts is good. Anything in the single digits is what we strive for. So like for every nine attempts, we get an answer. I'm happy with that. Anything higher than 15, my team's got to recalibrate, swap out numbers, check on the list, et cetera, et cetera. But man, if you can get under 15, you're going to be really good at getting humans on the phone. And then comes the next phases of what you got to do. But at least you're getting humans on the phone. Yeah, that's really good. All right. What are some other KPIs or numbers? So obviously talk time for me is really, really important. Um, and so, you know, there's two different segments of this. You have time on the dialer, that's to generate the lead, and then you have the closing side. So they're kind of two different KPIs. But for me, our average qualified lead is somewhere between 14 to 17 minutes long. Wow, really? Which is unheard of in this space. Wow. Because people normally send a heartbeat and a home lead. They're like, oh, it's got a heartbeat, it's got a home, send it. We're yeah. like, dude, no, hyper-qualify, ask all these questions. And so I just know that if Gladys Smith in Charleston, South Carolina, wants to sell her home and we are taking the time to build a relationship, it takes time to take homes. We are taking the time to build a relationship. My talk time should be really high. I'd rather have long talk time and less conversations because I'm going to generate really, really good leads. Okay. That's fantastic. Yeah. Those are really solid numbers. Two million dials. A week. About a week. Yeah. Wow. 1.8 to 2, just depending on if we work a Saturday. Wow. Um, do you do other industries outside of <laughs> real estate, wholesaling? No. As of this moment, no. Uh, I got a lot of guys in the wings 
Uh, but it's just due to the manpower space here. We don't move into our new office until like September 1st, and that will allow me the ability to do it. Um, but I'm also two uh, blinders on the horse guy. So right now I know where my goals are, where I want to be here with this campaign. And so once, and we're about 80% there, once that's done, then it'll allow us to pivot into other industries. But right now we just added a, a commercial campaign. We're doing self storage for one affiliate that we have a, uh, partnership deal with. Uh, we're doing a small apartment campaign. So like I consider that all one industry. So that's all in one bucket. And then there's a couple of other complementary. Uh, industries that we have access to uh, that we'll probably delve into. Nice. And guys, if you were listening to this or watching this, you want more information, uh, go to jomacallcom slash Lamasu. And that's spelled L-A-M-A-S-S-U. jomacallcom slash L-A-M-A Lama Su S-S-U. Go check that out. Where'd you come up with the name Lama Su? So I appreciate it. Um, it means a lot to me, man. Uh, my last company, our mascot was a lion. And the one before that was an eagle. And so I'm always really big on having mascots for the office. And so what I tell these guys is, hey, listen, we're lions. We're not hyenas. We don't laugh. We're not scavengers. We're out here. We eat what we kill. We're the top of the predatory food chain in this space. And when it comes to eagles, like we're eagles, we soar alone. We're not ducks. We're not out there getting breadcrumbs. <laughs> and so I knew I wanted to mix the two together. And so I just started doing research. It's the very first time in recorded history that a lion and eagle were meshed. And it goes back to Assyria, which is now modern day Iraq. And uh, it was just called Lamassu, the very first time in recorded history that we can prove that a lion and eagle were mushed wow. together as a, as a Lamassu, excuse me. And That's uh, cool. And so we just took it on and all our guys know exactly what that means and how to hold themselves accountable to be a Lama Sioux. That's cool. That's really cool. Thanks, all right. Um, can we talk about scripts? What are some of the things that your cold callers say? How does the conversations go? Yeah, I was actually looking to see if I had the script here. Um, so let's talk about the script. I think that before the script comes real estate edification, because most times you're not going to be the, the CEO is not going to be doing the cold calling. Sometimes it is, Hey, listen, you're still at that build up phase. You're, you're there. Uh, but a lot of times it's, you're having an entry level agent do it. So if it's onshore in your office off, you just got to make sure they can have a true conversation about real estate. You know, I heard once uh, an outside source, the person kept on saying stud, like, Oh, it's down to the studs. And just like a nuanced word like that, they just didn't comprehend. And so we have a three-week incubation program before they even get. I mean, it's just all real estate 101, 201. We use a learning management system. But these guys can talk about like macro real estate issues. They know about inflation. They know what a yard sign is, a soffit, a gutter, a shutter, a stud. Um, you know, yeah. so I think that there's got to be some foundation before the script because – you're going to be on the script and the customer is going to say something. You got to have an intelligent conversation, but to the script, man, we're just, we're right out of the gates. We stick to the script. It's written out. You know, Hey Joe, Hey, this is Scott. I'm calling in regards to your property. Like we don't use the street number. There's a lot of things, but we want to make sure if you saw my sales floor, which is like 180 some people or whatever right now, I guess 200. Uh, but like they're standing up, they all have tall desks. They have the option to be tall. They're just standing up. It's a true, true. Like if you follow me on my Instagram at Lama Su leads, you get to see behind the scenes on this, this call center, man. Well, that's cool. I'm, I, I wanted to go look at it right now, but that would be kind of rude. <laughs> <laughs> I can't carry it. <laughs> but your, your IG handle is uh, at Lama Sue Leads, right? L A M A S S U Leads, L E A D S, um, on Instagram. Um, cool. So it's like you, you train these guys the lingo, right? You train them a little bit about what th these terminologies are. Yeah, we do. And I wanted to say this because I just saw it here. So this is also something we train them on. So on the, every little, and we have a couple of these in the office, but on every little diamond is an objection. So I'm busy, not now. Why do you think I'm selling my house? Can't you just email me the offer? I'm sorry, but that price is too low. I don't know what it's worth. You tell me. Uh, maybe in a couple of months. So like literally, these guys, we're in a circle, boom, catch it, whatever pops up, you're a scam. I need to research you. Uh, they have to have the rebuttals down, the rebuttals down. Wow, um, serious. I'm busy, not right now. Mr. And Mrs. Jones, if you'll just give me two minutes of your time, I promise the information I have for you, you'll find more than valuable. 
boom, bridge close. And so they're all, it's a real deal sales environment that we have here to be able to be and say like, hey, we're going to disrupt this industry. <laughs> That's so cool. And you have 180 of these guys. Yeah. Guys and girls. Guys and girls. Yeah. Girls actually perform. This is generalized. But my director of sales here is a 26 year old woman who came in, murdered the campaign, became the closer, became a top closer. And she just assists everything for me here on this floor. She's a monster. And most of my top agents are females here. And maybe they're just a little bit softer on the phone or they can get away. I think sometimes with saying stuff a guy can't say to a, to a grouchy (laughs) male seller. Yeah. Yeah. Are they hard to, is it hard to find people there? No, I'm the highest paying call center in the state. Wow. That's amazing. Uh, I would assume the English is probably better with Colombians than it is maybe with the Philippines. Have you found that to be true? Yeah, uh, particularly all the cultural references, because it's not just speaking, it's uh, comprehension, you know. And so you can I call it the Alabama test. Like uh, you can handle a campaign in Alabama. You're going to be good to go here. Uh, but I'd say half my agents are expats as well, too. Or I, I, That's probably technically not correct. It's they went and lived for a certain amount of years there. And then grandma got sick or mom got sick and they came home. And, you know, this is like a little taste of the United States in their own backyard. But most of the kids have lived in the States. OK, um, th- so if, it, if you don't mind me asking, like, wh- what is your average salary that you pay uh, your folks and how does that compare to the U.S.? Yeah. So really good question. So I think the minimum salary here is like 1.4 ish. Uh, and I'll explain what that means in us dollars here in a second. It's not a lot. And then, so like our base salary here is 2.1 and then they can get commissions up to about another three to 4 million. It just depends. So I'd say in us comparison, maybe about two grand, 1500 a month. Dollars. Yeah. Okay, cool. Very cool. And um, for in Colombian standards, that's doing really well. Excellent. So, are you uh, are you finding with the current economic climate right now, it's been hard to find good help? You see this a lot in the U.S. It's it's hard to hire people. No, I haven't seen that at all, Joe. Um, And I really because I've ran big centers in you know South Florida before. Money aside, let's just talk about human desire to improve themselves. So strong here, man. Like, I'm so happy. Like, I get, like, sometimes I'm having a, like, super stressed out day, and a kid will come up to me and be like, hey, man, I just want to tell you how much this has changed my life or how much this means. And it's like, it's, I've had, you know, I'm an older guy. I'm in my 40s now, but I can't, I can count on one hand how many times somebody said that in the United States. And it would take all mine and yours and yeah. just the past two years to be able to count how many times somebody sat me down and been like, hey, man, this is this really means a lot. We don't have opportunity like this here. Or, dude, I just bought a bike. Or, hey, man, you changed my life. It's uh, it's cool, man. And we're doing all that while also changing other people's lives. And, and that's what they have programmed. They understand they send a lead. Let's say a wholesaler gets that lead. That wholesaler is going to get that lead. It's going to help that seller out. And he's going to make a little money. But then that other guy who bought that deal is going to you know, buy it. And then he's going to hire a painter and hire a roofer and hire somebody to do the floors. And mm. so like, they understand this butterfly effect that we're having down here to wow. change the lives and improve the lives of countless, who knows, countless people improving the neighborhoods, decreasing crime. Like, dude, they get it. It's like, we're, we're getting paid handsomely to help people help other people who then help other people. That's a great perspective. I've never kind of looked at it that way before. Um, let's talk about to, to the beginner listening to this podcast, right? Yeah. Who, you know, wants to do their first deal. They're just getting started. They're interested in real estate and they're like, man, this cold calling sounds awesome. I'd love to do that. I can't sign up for something like with Lama Sue, but, um, what uh, what should they start with? How how do how do they get into this game? All right. So if you're a newbie and you're looking to get started for the first time, what I would tell you is pick up the phone. Pick up the phone. Pick up the phone. There's so much analysis paralysis. Yeah. There's so much fear and rejection. And I can just tell you, you have to get the marbles out of your mouth. That's what we call it. You have to get started. I would encourage you to spend the 150 bucks, get a dialer, understand that dialer, use that dialer, buy 10,000, 20,000 records, 
That's very an inexpensive barrier of entry. And understand that this is an industry where you get paid for failure. You will be told 99 out of 100 calls, kick rocks, I hate you, what are you doing calling me? But that one, and the numbers are actually a little bit more skewed than that, but that little percentage of success that you have, you're not getting really paid for that success. You're getting paid to get past that failure. And so embrace the suck, as they say, like, hey, man, like this is going to be tough, but this is how I can now change my family's life. So definitely, definitely, definitely get a dialer. Don't be afraid and don't outsource early. I had this conversation with one of my partners this morning. I said, man, these, these kids, it's like the blind leading the blind. How can you hold somebody else accountable for a performance that you can't do yeah. or you don't have an extreme understanding of? And so until you can get a couple of deals under your belt doing it yourself, I personally would never encourage one of my friends or families to outsource even to a company like myself until you know what the expectations should be and you can hold somebody accountable and then level up. That's really good. Pick up the phone. I've always said the money is made on the phone. And if you're not on the phone, you're not making any money. Amen. Simple as that. Um, What are some tools you might recommend to a beginner to start looking at for starting cold calling? Yeah. So I think obviously getting data in the dialer, the the first two things, um, and then a script too. And so I don't like cell phones. Let me just say this. Number one, I got it. People like to call from their cell phones. I'm on the run. I'm a... Do you got a hobbyist or you're an entrepreneur, bro? Because you need to be in front of your computer. You need to treat this like a job. It is a job yeah. if you want to scale, particularly in the beginning. For the When I say beginning, I mean first years. But the reason why you shouldn't be on your phone is, A, it's got too many other distractions on it. But two is you don't have an ability to record yourself. You don't have the ability to track your talk time. You need to hold yourself accountable. So period, get a actual business set up, track your phone calls, see what you're doing, set yourself a goal. Dude, I did 99 calls yesterday. I'm going to do 115 today. I did 115 yesterday. I'm going to do 125. Oh man, I set my month record 168, you know, whatever their numbers are. But if you can't track where you're at, you can't set a goal for improvement. So definitely get some type of phone system that tracks everything. Be intelligent about your lists. Um, One thing I see people do is fail a lot with buying really bad lists. And they're like, I do, but I pay three cents for it. I'm like, well, you pay three cents too much. Like there's all major vendors out there. I know you can probably recommend some, but the major guys have legit data going on Fiverr and getting some guy and somewhere in the Middle East to send you a list at two cents a pop. That ain't it, Jack. So good data, good platform. Um, we use, we've used call tools in the past. We use Mojo Cells right now. Um, we do some cold calling like on a smaller scale with FreedomSoft, direct, but that's one at a time. Um, yeah. Do you have any favorite tools that you recommend? So I can tell you, I built my business off of Zen Call in the beginning. Uh, we got bigger than Zen Call could handle. And so we invested a significant amount of money into a platform called Five9. And we've continued to invest into their platform. And so, you know, our build out was probably 60K and we spent another 20, not even monthly. I mean, my monthly bill is high, but that's just reflective of the size. But I mean, we have to because we've spent, you know, we're doing 2 million dials a week. So I would say that if you're starting out, I'm comfortable with Zen Call, um, but I don't have much experience in other ones. So, yeah. Okay. Are you guys doing any mass texting, text broadcasting right now? Yep. Yep. That's a service that we offer our affiliates as well, too. It's a managed service. We take them from text to phone, but we use a platform called Launch Control. And so I don't get anything for saying this, but I'm telling you, I have tested every major texting platform out there. For me, I was just for me. I've never been able to find a platform that had a higher deliverability than those guys. And I love their interface. So I can say I love Launch Control. Um, Have you been finding it's getting harder to do over the last few months? No, the more hoops, more registration, more liability shifted over to guys like us instead of the actual service provider, but not harder. However, I will say this. Is there something that we call compression, market compression? I can tell if a market is heavy cold called by its answer rate. I can also call tell if it's been heavy texted. And so when I see it being tougher, it just means more people are entering in the same marketing channel. And so you go into a softer market like Southern Georgia and you do text, amazing. You do Atlanta, not so much comparatively, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, uh, but right. not so much comparatively. And so it just really depends how much there's actually had happen on it okay. in that channel. One more question I want to ask you. 
to the beginner. And then I want to yeah. ask you about when somebody signs up for you and they're already yeah. at that level, you can take them on. What are some of the steps you walk them through? Um, so the beginner who wants to do cold calling, where do you, what kind of list do you suggest they start with? So that's a really good question. I think it's somewhat market specific. Let me t- say a generalized thing that is not going to be liked by some people in the industry, some gurus. I am anti hedge fund pretty across the board, hedge fund heavy markets, I should say. And the reason why is because if you're new and you're trying to buy SFR threes buy box in Atlanta or Jacksonville or whatever, you are not the only guy buying that little segmented list. Like here's all the houses that are probably in a wholesalers buy box and here's SFR or any major hedge fund. But you got cowboys from Arizona calling in, cowboys from Texas calling in, cowboys from Virginia. And so you're competing as a newbie against hyper-established, well-funded guys who do nothing but chase hedge funds across the nation. And so if I'm new, I'm going to stay out of that hedge fund buy box. And most people, if they're new, they don't know how to find out what all the hedge funds buy boxes are and to try to navigate that. So for me, if I'm new and I'm virtual, which I... I'm yeah. hyper, a big fan of virtual. I would kind of stay away from the hedge fund heavy markets if I can. And one or two, that's great. But eight, it's it's just going to be, it's going to be very, very compressed yeah. to get people on the phone and compete with the more established guys. That's good. Are you doing any cold calling for land investors? Not yet. I've had a couple of guys. Uh, I've, oh, I remember I spoke with you not too long. Yeah. I think it was you. Yeah, about yeah. it as well, too. You know, I'm not. Uh, I've done one campaign in North Carolina for a guy who also does single family homes. He was like, anything that's land that has a mountain view, I want it. So that was simple. But I, I haven't really done land yet. And there's not too many people that I speak to that are in that vertical. So I think it's probably one of those untouched ish type uh, uh, segments. It's one of those things, too, where direct mail still works really well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that kind of evolves and changes. Um, okay. So let's talk about the, 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 the guy is already doing five, six deals a month. They want to scale it up. They contact you. Uh, wh- what kind of steps do you walk them through? Yeah. So even if you're doing, some people are doing five to six deals a month and it's like they're rowing a boat upstream, uh, right into the face of the waterfall. And so some guys are five, six, small team, murdering it, everything's tight. So it's really just establishing like where they're at. Like, are they fighting tooth and nail to get the five deals or are they comfortable at five deals? Um, And so once I can establish that, like we have an hour, hour and a half, like coaching call on best lead practices on how to handle our leads, how to open our leads, nurture cadences, what we feel like their text drip campaign should look like based on our channel of leads, what the cadence for follow up should be, average length of time to sale that they should expect, and then average closing ratio. So we like everything set up in the beginning. We know how many leads it takes to get to a deal, the length of time what the campaign should say from a nurture standpoint. And we just, we just establish a mandatory minimum. So that way I can hold them accountable and they can hold me accountable. Okay, cool. What kind of team do they need to have? (sighs) So if they're doing five to six deals a month, typically they have two or three acquisition guys, easy breezy. Uh, They have a dispo guy or gal, somebody's handling that as well too. Uh, And I'd like to see the CEO, me personally still involved. Okay. Uh, sometimes you'll get these guys and these CEOs just can't wait to get out of the business. And <laughs> sometimes it's a leaderless operation and you can tell, and it's an accountability issue. Uh, but for the most part, listen, if you're doing five to six deals in a, in a, in a tough market and you see, there's a difference between doing also writing five to six deals and funding five to six deals. Uh, and a lot of wholesalers are like, Oh man, look, I just uh, projected profit on this is 36 on Instagram. I'm like, okay, well, talk to me in 45 days and tell me if you actually disposition that deal. There's so many vanity numbers in this industry. It blows my mind, Joe. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, if you guys want more information, again, the link, go to it right now is joelmccall.com slash Lamasu, L-A-M-A-S-S-U. And on there, um, kind of walk through what you, sh- you say, something about 10 free 10,000 dials per month. Yeah. 
So, dude, yeah, I appreciate it because you reached out to me and we were talking yeah. about it. But one of my things for you, and it's kind of my gratitude for having me on the podcast, is anybody who follows your link, they sign up with through that link. Uh, they get an additional 10,000 free insane. dials a month for the lifetime of their agreement with us. And it's just my way of saying, hey, dude, like, thanks for coming, checking us out. Thanks for having me on. Uh, they'll get that as long as they, they have to follow that link. It's not available to the public. Um, but if they follow your link, man, dude, I'd, I'd love to talk to them and see how we can help them stabilize, then scale. You, you ain't, we ain't scale, scaling until we stabilize, but stabilize, then scale their marketing efforts. Nice. I'm looking at your website here. It's a really good website. Thank you. And uh, you give a lot of good information here. And um, 10,000 dials a month for free. That's pretty good. I mean, <laughs> I know some, <laughs> some smaller wholesalers that uh, they're, they're doing that. Um, for yeah. every, uh, that's what they're doing per month, but, um, you're going to give that for free. Cool. All right. Um, anything else maybe that you want to say, any final words of advice for our folks? Yeah. Listening in? Yeah. I, I would just tell people in this industry, like the process has to be stronger than the people. And so mm -hmm. whether that's leveraging me as the, the who, right. The, the, you know, who, not how, but I'm my processes for generating high quality cold call leads are established. Like it's 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 a machine. We just insert dials here. But it's also the same thing for anybody else's business. Like, are your processes established? Are you doing just the mandatory minimums and then scaling from there? And if you're not creating a good sales culture too, like, hey, are you going in the morning and we having a meeting every day? Uh, am I having my guys write their goals once a month? Am I following up with them on their goals? There's just so many small things that you got to do as a leader first. And then once you've established like, hey, I'm the guy that everybody in the company or woman that everybody in the company should look up to. And I'm going to outwork everybody here until they have that opportunity to grow and take over management. But yeah, man, I, I see a lot of guys and gals in this industry and I'm like, man, if I could just get them from a five to a seven in their life or from a six to like an eight, just to help them cut up that thermostat a little. They'd really have a compounding success that they can't even wrap their head around. So uh, I love your industry. I'm super appreciative of being having the opportunity to come on here and, and talk with you. And, uh, dude, I just I'm super I'm filled with gratitude this morning. And I thank you. Thank you, Scott, so much. Guys, go check him out on Instagram. Lama Sue leads. L-A-M-A-S-S-U leads on Instagram. Hopefully you get your account back too. I don't know what's going on there. Keep yeah, well, that. that was my personal account just got hacked this morning. Oh, okay, okay. Account yeah. at Lamasu leads. Come follow and, and do watch our stories. We're constantly posting live from the call. So hitting the gong, cowbell, like everything. It's, it's great. Man, I'd love to come down there and see you guys. Love you. I've been wanting to go down there for a long, long time. Um, and if you want more information, you want to get t free 10,000 dials per month. Go to jomacallcom slash Lamasu, L-A-M-A-S-S-U. Um, appreciate you being on the show, Scott. Thank you very much. We'll see you guys all later. Bye-bye, everybody.